What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Hollywood Already Did It, your movie podcast for reboots, remakes, sequels, adaptations, and the question of why we continue to do this. As always, I am your host, Blake Schultz, and with me is Terrence Tatum. Hello, everyone. And this week sees the release of A Quiet Place Day One, the prequel after a cliffhanger to the Quiet Place <laughs> franchise, which is quickly becoming if not one of the best, the most consistently good horror franchises out at the moment. Um, yeah. yeah. With a new cast, a new director, everything about the movie is new except for the day that it takes place in the story. <laughs> uh, every single other aspect of it, brand new. But uh, Terrence, what did you think? Um, yeah, you're right. This is becoming, I think Scream might be my other, but like, like the franchise that like you each time... I, I I enjoy this, but at least I think with Scream, people do point to one of them being bad. Like Scream Three is like a bad one for most some people. I still enjoy this one. I you know what's crazy about the Quiet Place franchise is that when it comes down to the films, when you think about them, they're all said and done. The alien aspect is probably the least interesting piece of these movies. Um, these are big character studies. These are all, each each of these films has been like character pieces. It's the family with their kids and, and dealing with the loss and how they have to sort of kind of come together and be, be one without that second one without the father and this one is a lot with Lupita's character just being this person who is kind of shut off life she's given up on life life has sort of done her in um and <laughs> oddly enough this day one fiasco that occurs gives her a new sense of life a new sense of purpose and it's to kind of care for someone else and kind of get them all to being being themselves but it's giving her a, a, a last chance to sort of remember the time when she was happiest and that a character study in the middle of a horror movie it's fascinating and and some of the best work and these this is a series that does it and does it well and so i walked out of this uh having a, just a good an overall good feeling with this franchise and like yeah each of these movies does something a different looks at a different character or a different piece and just gives me a character now there are some not to say that this isn't scary. There are some great action beats in this movie. Um, I think I, it's smart, and I think you and I went to do this with Cloverfield and a couple other franchises. Like, cool, hey, if a big inciting incident affects the whole world, Planet of the Apes is another one. If a big inciting incident affects the whole world, let's not just stay with one city or just stay with not one person. This one decides, let's go look at New York. And uh, that's a fun thing because like, New York is massive and loud all the time. So when you think about creatures who have to deal with, like, I find you with sound and New York is this mag big and massive in a big city, this is a fun world to play in. And they 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 do their most to sort of use that far better than I think uh, Scream, Scream, the last Scream that was in New York. I feel like this this one uses the city better than that one using, in fact, uh, doing the, the sewer and the, the water and like that whole sequence and just the glass buildings. It's just, it uses the city and that city becomes a piece of this world too. And I think it's a cool thing to be away from the rural area that we were in the first two to kind of be in this big world and just see it. But all at the end of the day, it still comes back down to the characters, uh, which is a testament to these films. Yeah, I completely agree. I think it's interesting when uh, a movie can just consistently have interesting character moments and focus more on that than build its world. And I wonder if that's why we took this pause before getting back to the main story because eventually that'll have to be what it is um yeah. but i also really appreciated this did exactly what i wanted buddy sorry there's a dog yapping away are you not getting enough attention there you go this is your you need to be in a quiet place now waldo that's what we need <laughs> um but it's doing exactly what i wanted cloverfield to do and mm -hmm. what they sort of teased at first when the first movie came out and it was all found footage and, oh my God, what's this mystery and who knows and what's this and what's that. I remember there was an interview where they said, well, we might just do the sequel with a different camera angle on the same day. It might be the camera right. footage from one of the military people. It might be something else that's going on. It might be this. And instead what we got was a very good intimate movie followed by a yeah. very giant weird yeah. sci-fi movie trying to <laughs> over explain everything yeah. um, and i think this is giving us a course correction in that we have characters we're following but they're really proving that you can explore everything else that we can really see what's going on and we can take somebody with cancer and somebody who knows they're dying and give you 
a really interesting story and even ending just that those final few beats and the stuff that you see coming yeah. and to also sort of film it almost like a silent movie. Like it was so tense and intimate the entire time. And I was very impressed how, you know, in the first one and even the second one, I was like, well, how often can something fall down? And we see them be like, Oh, Oh, we caught it. Okay. Let's put it back. Yeah. And this sort of plays with a lot of other ideas and how to kind of do that. And since it's day one, you're seeing them try to help people by telling them where evacuations are. But by doing that, everything comes. <laughs> you're right. seeing some monsters do like Spider-Man routines when you zoom out and just be like, oh yeah, they're just hanging out like gargoyles <laughs> waiting yeah. for this stuff to go down. Yeah. Um, we don't really add any new lore or behavior. We see, oh, there's something they open that they can eat out of. We can start to kind of piece yeah. it together. And you just don't do that a lot in movies, especially horror or sci-fi anymore, where you're sort of learning about the creatures in real time with everybody else and figuring out their behavior and their patterns and what they react to, um, which I really it's pretty, appreciated. Pretty cool to see. I think this audience has been here long enough that it, it would have been hard to watch them, uh, move folks go through the motions of like, hey, let's try to figure out how these aliens work. These people catch on pretty quick to, to what to do and what not to do. Uh, and so that just makes the movie better. Like, all right, cool, we got those points. Let's let's move on um, and deal more open in the character study. Yeah, it was sort of fun to see how quickly everyone figured it out. Um, because I think, you know, I usually have a lot of prequel problems, one of which is watching people figure out what we already know. And yeah. normally to do that, they pull a Phantom Menace and add like midi chlorians to it <laughs> so that we're also learning something new that we didn't know about. And then we have to keep kind of retrofitting everything. Um, but I really did appreciate that this just sort of was like, no, they put it together. The aliens have attacked, which I mean, sort of makes sense when you sort of think about it, that there would be somebody who's like, oh, hey, I noticed they're going towards the loud noises, which makes sense right. in general for an animal, but also <laughs> it seems like it's fine. Uh, so sort of watching them all do that. And even the inclusion of the cat, let you do a lot mm -hmm. of new fun things of, oh, he can get over here, but like, what do we know? And oh no, and who's gonna, what's gonna happen? Yeah. Uh, it still had a lot of the same brutal moments that the first two have, and a lot of just that sense of dread that makes mm -hmm. it fit. But I do think it's interesting for the third movie in a franchise where normally we would probably talk about what is and isn't connecting or what's working for a modern audience or why are we still here? especially with a prequel, which I normally am the most adamantly like, I don't care at all. Get back to where I'm going to sort of prove that you can do it and do it right. This is, I think, now the flagship and the example when we do a prequel of where I go. See, we don't even really need to change genres. Just go over there and yeah. show me something else. And I feel like it's what we've been clamoring for for other franchises. The amount of times we talk about Star Wars and are like, just show me what's going on over here. Yeah. Show me what's going on on the other side of Endor. Show me what the bounty hunters are up to. I don't need to always be on this path. Uh, and you see it a lot with Marvel, where we do start being like, okay, we know that New York is now full of superheroes, but what's going on in San Francisco, what's Chicago, Florida? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, how's the world reacting to Iron Man or Thor's hammer or mm -hmm. Captain America existing? You do start to ask those questions. And I think as we are more like globally connected with social media, the question gets brought up faster and faster for movies. Cause I so quickly now I'm like, well, I know what's going on everywhere. So like, I want to see how they're all responding right. to everything all the time. <laughs> yeah. um, it does also avoid a lot of the other big franchise problems as they go of like, we got to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, which I think we also talk about getting smaller sometimes that, the best way to get bigger is to get a little bit smaller, is to get a little more practical, is to make it a little more tangible. Like everything here felt very touchable. Uh, and what's crazy is like the city got bigger, like where they went to got bigger, but the story actually got smaller. Like we deal with less people. We have more people on the board because we're in New York, but we end up, we're, we're focused on two people versus the uh, family, which is just less than what we had previously, which is, which is, pretty crazy to do that in a third film but the city is what gets larger and like that's a smart script thing to say okay i know we normally are supposed to get bigger and bigger as we go along 
let's have the city get bigger, but let's still keep the essence of being as intimate as we possibly can. And like you said, this is a silent movie. At a good, a good chunk of the running time, there are no talking. It's just, it's just Lupita and Joseph staring and doing facial reactions, and and so much is being carried across by just the two of them and their looks. There's Lupita might be the best at it because we've seen her do it before in us too. But some of the facial stuff that she does with her face is just mind blowing because you she can can so much stuff with just a look yeah she's uh quickly becoming one of my favorite horror actors and more and more and even yeah. this director pig and then this and we're really kind of right. honing in on some new stuff and i i think that's exciting when you can see new things and familiar properties because that's usually the secret sauce to make something work is kind of mm-hmm figuring out how to get a new story into something that'll print you money. Um, (laughs) That's what everyone's chasing. No one wants a new idea. They just want something old to feel new again. That's all we're doing here. Uh, But it is really fun too. And I think we've said it with every quiet place movie that we've talked about almost inverting what it means to be a theater worthy movie by being so quiet and so in it where normally now, Mm -hmm. Oh, it has to be an event, which means it has to be huge and it has to be loud and the screens have to be worth going to so that it can beat your home theater. And this is such a turn the lights off, don't get up, don't move. You're mm-hmm. so in it. And that experience, that shared experience with everybody else too, really harkens back to why it was fun to see horror movies in theaters of other people kind of like freaking out at different moments. Yeah. Um. So I think that's always fun. And I think I that's... I thought about, like, <clears throat> I usually go to... I typically now go to the movies early in the morning because I have a kid now. So I used to, like, all right, the best time for me to just, like, knock this out early or super late. But my horror movies are those ones where I was like, I still need to see these with an audience because this is one of those last genres that's community experience. And like you said, getting those interactions of stuff, like, stuff that I wasn't jumping at, but someone else too was like, Oh, they nailed that. Like that worked. That worked. <laughs> it's always funny just seeing the moments where you're like, ah, there's gonna be a jump scare here. It won't get me. And then like five other people are like, oh my God. Why would they do that? I felt so safe. And it's like, hey, you fools. Um yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's it's wild to sort of see a summer that started with, oh no, everything's over and the world is collapsing because Fall Guy did not do well and neither did Tarot or something else that underperformed that I don't remember anymore. And really? now a day, a rec- franchise record breaking for its opening two days. It'll probably beat yeah. Inside Out 2, which means Inside Out 2 was still making a boatload of money. A ton of money. <laughs> As of um, Saturday morning, it was at what, 53, 55 million? Yeah. So it's, that's better than the other two on day one. Yeah. On their first day. Yeah. It's interesting. I don't know what gets learned from this though, because here's the issue. All three of these films are a follow-up to a, a previous entry into a film. So bad boys inside out. We just happen to be having the three, the, the run of the three films are like, Oh crap. Yes. Box offices are back and yes, these are in, but these are also sequels of big hit films. I think, it, you know, it's it's learning stuff we already know, right? I don't think we should have been surprised that Bad Boys 4 or this or Inside Out made a bunch of money. They're all sort of proving some group of people wrong. There were a lot of people who thought, oh, well, Will Smith's done. It's over the right. slap. They're wrong. There were a lot of people who were like, right. Pixar's, Pixar's past, done. it's done, Correct. blah, blah, yeah. blah. They're wrong. Um and a lot of horror movies weren't doing well this year. They're wrong. Mm-hmm. So it, it, in a weird way, it's nice to be like, see, guys, it's a small group on the internet that are freaking out or making a big deal. Everyone calm down. Yeah, You're right, though. There is that weird implication um, that this is all the studios are going to do. And I think that's right. the loop we've been stuck in for a while. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it's going to be less about – what's the best way to put this? It'll be less about the franchises and more about is there a number one at the end of it? Like we have Borderlands right. coming up, which is the first mm-hmm. movie in that series, and it's a huge video game. And you have kind of other things like that, or even newer. Inside Out is only a two. A Quiet Place, is, this is just three. 
even Bad Boys is still four with a big break. We're not quite like MCU 20 movies in and the 17th reboot of the fourth right. horror, blah, 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 the requel to the this. And, uh, but even like things like Alien Romulus are finding ways to mm-hmm. sort of take what we know and just kind of go somewhere else. Yeah. So I imagine that if it was like the reboot, the requel, the sequel, the new thing we're going to sort of find is kind of rerouting where we're going. And like the video game adaptations and the things that have a fanship that we just haven't seen yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but properties are never going to die. I mean, they're never no. not going to have Superman. I think the one thing you do hope is that we make enough money from these that they fund or can support the like the loss leaders of well, a, a small independent darling that you start yeah. seeing a resurgence of those kind of, I don't want to say B tier, but specific type of movies yeah Yeah, like like, you don't get like right now apple has presumed innocent on tv as a tv series we don't get those crime dramas at a a movie release anymore they just they just don't happen uh and so those are the those type of things those adult those adult dramas that i mean bike riders is out it's considered to be artisan but like that's one of those ones where you're like hey this shouldn't it's funny i've talked about bike riders because that director originally was on this film uh, and they oh, I didn't know that. Differences. That's wild. Yeah, <laughs> he was on. He was on this, and he had creative differences. So it's am- amazing to say that Quiet Place came out and told, "Shut that movie down." <laughs> like, oh, whoops. Uh, um, but yeah, like you, you get them, but they're so far and few between. I think a little bit more studios need to sort of say, "Hey, let's have a couple of these in, in the tuck too." But our big, our big studios are all just about the ones that bring in dollars, and that's kind of unfortunate at the moment. Yeah, and it's sort of, I mean, it's unfortunate and it makes sense. Like, we saw such a huge, like, lull and dip uh, between (laughs) COVID and strikes. And, like, Mm -hmm. so it is a very strange, like, yeah, we got to kind of get it back and then we can kind of do this other thing. Uh, But it is very interesting when you look at the summer and fall and winter. And it is, it just (laughs) feels... It feels more than usual. And I don't know if that's just because we don't have as many releases in general. And so therefore the ones we do are going to be the obvious hits, but the rest of this time fall gladiator Two, Joker two, we have so many just like, we're doing it again. Re up. Yeah. Yeah. That, um, I mean, they're definitely going to learn the wrong lessons but hopefully what they do also learn is that time can sometimes be a friend like it it was Mm -hmm. five years before between bad boys it was what eight ten between inside outs yeah um even a quiet place too was like 2021 so i i feels like an eternity with covid like that's that feel 2020 actually that was yeah yeah so yeah um deadpool 3 depending on how you want to count it the last mcu movie was last year deadpool 2 was in 2017 and the last x-men movie was in 2020 was with new mutants um so depending on how you stack that one that's a fun little hodgepodge of everything but (laughs) but yeah it's 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 interesting and but we're also seeing reverting speaking of deadpool and wolverine and bad boys we're seeing more traditional marketing. They're doing that weird fun vending machine for Deadpool and Wolverine. There was a lot of grassroots bad boy you stuff. Saw there saw Will and Martin everywhere on every like Will did hot ones. Like Will Smith did hot ones. <laughs> like that's that's nuts. <laughs> yeah. So you're you know, you're seeing a lot of them making the effort to get people back. Mm-hmm. So I think they also no one knows if this is a guaranteed hit. Right. Um so you are seeing a lot of kind of going back. And I think since we're going to do that, if they figure out these traditional marketing methods work and you can kind of get people excited doing it this way, then eventually you will be able to make people excited for something like Wolves with just George Clooney mm-hmm. and Brad Pitt. Right. Get them on Hot Ones and get you them doing the all this. Around. Uh, I already know, like my wife saw the two of them. Like, well, yeah, I want to see that. Like you parade the two of them around. Those are two, they, they're, they may not have it to the young audience, but those are two bona fide box office stars that you have there. You put the both of them together and parade them around. I think you'll 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 be okay. Yeah, you'll have something. Um, yeah. And I think it's funny how more and more when we have flops, a lot of people are like, "Well, I didn't even know this was around." Mm-hmm. That's yeah. Like Furiosa like, was one of those ones where I did not 
not see Anya around as much. And I don't know why that is. I don't know if they were just like, hey, this is Mad Max. This is a Mad Max follow-up. They spent all their money making that movie. They didn't have any money to promote (laughs) that movie. (laughs) It's very true. Um, But yeah, like you didn't see them around. Now, Ryan and I think Fall Guy, you sort of did. Like Ryan and him, I saw around. Not as much as I've seen Will and Martin. But you saw them around. I think a lot of theirs was a different issue that they showed too much in their trailer. Whereas I think Furiosa and they're, was like, back. Their big push was so close to their release. Like they really just kind of started mm-hmm. really, really hammering that closer to the to the time. I don't. Yeah, I think was, you do. It was in about seven days where Will and them were, I would say, three weeks beforehand. They were all over the place and still doing it two weeks after release. Like they didn't even stop. They were like, nope, we're going to keep going. Um, yeah, where you know a, a very old school model of, of doing that. I was gonna say it. It was the same thing with like Inside Out Two. I was seeing everywhere. A Quiet Place. I was so tired of that trailer, um, but yeah. it was everywhere. Like it really like, and it's it's interesting how all of that's kind of coalescing because I know what is next. I mean, why do I always forget? Um, oh, it's just the holidays. It's it's Spickle Me Four, which is gonna Spickle make a boatload of money. But uh, Beverly Hills Cop on netflix it's yeah a weird way to release that um i feel like they could have actually put that in theaters and actually made some money yeah i think they're really you know they have their strategy they have their whole way of doing it and then maxine and mm-hmm. then Flemina. so you do have a lot kind of coming up it is going to be interesting speaking of franchises that may not be hits how twisters will do that's kind of where my eye yeah. is now yeah. um but yeah it's certainly it looks a lot different. I feel like we treat the box office now like sports, where in week two, we're like, oh my God, is this the end? And then it's on week, week eight, we're like, I mean, this like, is the best team in the league. lost those first two games, but they have not lost since then. This has been great. Yeah, the way people just <laughs> flip-flop now. It's like it's like any Chicago Bulls thread, where they're just mad, and then they're not mad, and then everything's fine, <laughs> and then he's the next Michael Jordan and Tony Kukog, and then he's got to sell the entire franchise. It's like, we got yeah. to stop being reactionary, guys. <laughs> Uh, But I think that is our show for the week. So thanks everybody for listening. Leave us a review and a comment and uh, don't forget to follow on the YouTube channel. Hollywood already did it where Terrence also does all of our trailer reactions and show reviews and everything else. We're also on TikTok at Hollywood ADI. We're on Twitter at Hollywood already did it probably threads at Hollywood already did it because we have an Instagram account with that same name. I'm at, as always Blake and Terrence is at Terrence Tatum and we will see everybody next time for Beverly Hills cop. (laughs) Thank you.